Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you wanna see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's gonna look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. Hey, Patrick, thanks uh, for ordering the uh, the Try Before You Buy It kit. I'll give you um, I'll give you a bunch of ideas for your house, but then also just some different things you can play around with um, with those lights. Um, and uh, yeah, and kind of go from there. But I mean, you got a great property. I think where I would start to focus is because um, you could literally put probably 70, 80 lights on this property. But I think if you do it in stages or really focus on a couple things like the house, um, some of the bigger landscape items uh, would do a really good job. I think with the path lights that came uh, with your Try Before You Buy kit, I wouldn't use those in too many areas. Uh, primarily for maintenance, I think this walkway area is a nice area that you would want to use those. Um, the reason I like this walkway for that too is because anytime you have a light colored surface, you get more reflective light. So you basically get more bang for your buck. So that's why I don't mind path lights on a lighter walkway like this. The only thing I would say about it is just try and stagger them. So for example, if you have one here, you throw one kind of over here, maybe you throw another one over here. And I'm not even going to tell you to put one on the corner. I think maybe three path lights, that's it, because I'll talk to you about some other areas. So I really want to focus on highlighting the house, the nice peaks, the brickwork and all that kind of stuff that you have along with some of the landscape features. And I'll just give you some ideas on which lights to use where. So if I start over by the garage, the fact that you haven't paved this yet is a good thing because um, I love being able to highlight the different peaks on the garage. And basically you're going to have the same effect you'd get with that accent light that, that you've got coming in your try it kit. Um, but you want to use like an in-ground light here. So basically, you know, if we're looking at all the lights and there's a different version that we usually use for um, garage areas because it's a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. There we go. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, if I want to use a more compact uh, light that I can put flush in the ground so that you don't have to worry about hitting it uh, or seeing the fixture or anything, these in-ground lights are perfect for those garage areas. And I would actually use one that's a little bit smaller, so it's not as big as that one, um, but the brightness and intensity doesn't change. And I have those at the base of this column, this column, and this column, and you only need them about, you know, maybe about 12 inches back, if that, and have them kind of shooting straight up. Uh, to really highlight the garage and then we want to keep that same theme across the house i mean i'm a big fan uh and i'm just trying to get nice and close here um if you can i would definitely try and get some accent lights so those accent lights that you have to light up the entryway uh just in front of these pillars in front of these bricks here uh to highlight basically same thing just you know maybe 12 inches back straight up because what's nice is again you're going to highlight this whole entryway when the light hits the top here it's nice too because it it kind of um it spreads and it creates like a nice lit archway so it's a great way to make that front entrance really inviting if you did that with like three path lights along this walkway uh, it would just make this whole area super inviting and because you have the light here that's why i wouldn't put another one here because you are going to get some reflective light so uh, just that look into there uh, would be a really really um, inviting look something you may want to do also just to eliminate any dark, dark spots here is have another one of those accent lights say kind of just behind this bush under the window really that's just highlighting uh, this wall area so that as you're walking around you don't see a big dark spot in this corner and it just helps fill that gap and then you can continue that theme kind of around the house here where I would have another accent light shining pretty much straight up here that's going to get this uh, the second story peak and then I would probably try and put another one kind of underneath this window again you're not shining taking it back and shining it in the window you're really just trying to um, highlight the facade of the house a little bit so that would be a really good way to balance uh, this whole front section and then just to keep that theme consistent even though it's mostly window here even just having a light and i'm not sure if you're planning on maybe building a deck or porch here um, or if this is just for the seller um, but i think having some kind of light down in here 
would be a good option as well uh, again because you just you're trying to eliminate dark spots and what I always find is sometimes people will try and keep their budget down by not putting a light maybe in an area like this but then what you find is all this is lit all this is lit and all the other areas are lit and then you have an area like this where it's just a big dark spot so on areas like this even where you don't maybe need as much light but you just want something to fill that dark spot that's also where a lot of times I'll use a wash light like this um, it's not as bright, not as intense as an accent light. It's a wider angle, so it's perfect for uh, just a smaller area like that that you really just want to get a little bit of light into. And then that light is also great if you have any features, and that's where something, if you were to plant something here, call it like a lower line shrub or a feature or something like that, and you wanted to highlight that instead of getting it close to the house, um, that's a good option to do. And a lot of times we'll put small little landscaping features, sometimes even just some tall bushy grasses or something like that, um, that doesn't cost much to go and plant, but then you have something to highlight. What's cool is a lot of times too, if you highlight that properly, the light shines through and kind of creates some cool shadowing in some of those areas. So uh, something else to consider too, whether it's, you know, a flower pot or you want to plant something in those dark areas just to uh, fill out that that balance of lighting um, and those wash lights are great too for any smaller plants that you have or wider shrubs that are say under six feet it's a good light because it's not too intense and then the uh, the big behemoth this guy here I mean there's no way to properly light this with just one light um, on big trees like this especially uh, um, especially trees that I want to make a feature I would probably use two if not three lights on a tree like this and I would probably ideally I would probably try and get one kind of right out here that's almost shining straight up the trunk so you're getting most of this branching features and then really getting the the canopy and then what I like to do is get another one uh, kind of more to the side a little bit and it can even be from this uh, a little bit from the back the only thing you want to be careful with that is your viewing angle you don't want that light um, to be shining too much so that as you're walking by you see that in your eye but something that you can do if that does become an issue is put a hex baffle on it. Yeah, and so this is just an example of see how they've used two different uh, lights here because it's just too much canopy to cover with one light. So um, that gives you kind of an idea. And then so these hex baffles are um, are really key if you're trying to reduce glare. So if you have a light that's maybe too bright as you walk by, especially those two that I recommended by the door, you throw a hex baffle overneath the lens and it just helps deflect some of that glare. So I know I'm still on the first picture, but uh, I want to get through all of this. So again, I'd probably have one uh, and then two on both sides. If nothing else, at least two kind of maybe one from this angle and maybe one from this angle so that you can really do a good job of highlighting uh, this big tree. Uh, moving more around to this side of the house I mean if you wanted to you could put maybe a couple path lights in here if you wanted to kind of highlight this dry uh, rock creek I don't think you have to um, oh something I didn't mention is with this tree uh, the only other thing you're gonna want to do is that a standard accent light is probably not going to be bright enough uh, so what you're gonna want to do is upgrade these and I can help customize all these two with um, with some brighter lenses once you play around a little bit um, but by upgrading this to a big tree like that, you probably want to use a 50 watt equivalent LED lamp. So it's about a six watt, uh, or sorry, a, a 50 watt halogen equivalent, which is about a six watt LED lamp. Um, because what that's going to do is it's going to help push that light further up the tree. Whereas if you don't use that, um, you're really not going to get enough light to the canopy here. Same thing on these trees. This is something where I would probably use that same light and I would highlight on two different sides because again, I think uh, you want multiple viewing angles. You want to be able to see it from the house, but you also want to be see it as you drive in. So if you had two of those high intensity, those 50 watt equivalent accent lights on both sides of the tree in the mulch bed there, uh, it'll do a really good job of highlighting the trunk structure as well as getting light to that top canopy. And then on a light like this, again, because it's um, because it's wider, it's bushier. This is where I might use just two of the standard accent lights and try and hit this maybe from two different angles so that you're really um, getting this canopy area. And that's why I think you don't need to add a whole bunch of extra path lights or anything like that or worry about the driveway because I think those features are going to stand out so much um, that that's really what you want to highlight anyway. Um, the rest of the front of house, I mean, I would keep, I'm not sure if these are two separate houses or I think it's all the same house. You have two garages. Um, same theme over here, right? Uh, maybe these are two separate houses. 
uh, any way you can you can kind of let me know um, but I would do the same thing on the garage here I would probably try and do same kind of idea with the path lights over here just a couple to highlight that walkway if you can highlight um, on this side and this side of the door with some accent lights to just create that inviting look and then same thing on this side and this side as we did over here with those accent lights and you just have that continual flow of lighting all the way across um, uh, same thing you know any of these taller trees and I don't think you have to light every single one um, the mailbox that was something you wanted to highlight that would be an ideal candidate for one of those wash lights because you don't need it super bright but you just want to kind of highlight that um, you could definitely do some down lighting if you wanted to if you wanted to get a cool look some moonlighting and mount some of those accent lights up in the trees and have them shining down through some of the branches it's a really cool look because it it's like you have a full moon all the time because that light shines down through the branches and creates a shadowing pattern all along the driveway um, but that can get um, that can get very labor intensive and um, it just depends how far you want to go with this project if it was me I would probably at this point I would focus more on just accenting some of these big trees and it doesn't have to be every one just consider your viewing angle where do you want to see these from so for example if, say you wanted to see these trees from from this angle here well then I might just throw an accent light here I might just throw one on this one I might throw one there and then you've got these guys lit in the background because you can run up lights really quick if you're trying to light every single one on both sides of it uh, which don't get me wrong would look amazing but it just it runs up the budget very quickly whereas if there's some that are closer that you want to have two different viewing angles go for it and then the rest of them just consider hey where's my viewing angle where do I want this to look good from so again coming down the driveway is maybe where I want to see some of these trees I'm not gonna light every one but if I light a couple based on the viewing angle so maybe one over here one over here so that as I'm looking at it it looks like I have more trees actually lit than I do again with any of these trees that are higher than 35 feet you're gonna to want to use that 50 watt equivalent lamp anything that's over 25 feet you can use a 35 watt equivalent anything that's under 25 feet that's standard um, 20 watt equivalent like the one in your kit is uh, is what you want to do um, and then in the back here I mean again same thing what I like to do in the backyard um, I don't love using a lot of uh, path lights um, again because it's just going to become a maintenance headache uh, the other thing you you know you have to consider is at night uh, would you rather have the view of the lake or do you want a little bit of perimeter lighting so that you can kind of see uh, where the perimeter is lit so for example what I might do in a scenario like this is I probably wouldn't throw a bunch of um, accent lights but I might throw a couple in a few areas and just try and evenly space them you know maybe I would throw two on this tree because it's kind of unique and then maybe I would throw two on this one and maybe I would try and throw another one or two on there we're not trying to light everything I just want to create some visual lighting back here but I don't want to take away from the view of the lake at all so that's why I wouldn't use a ton of them um, if you were to do anything around the pool something I do like doing and I don't know if I have a picture of it I'm just gonna uh, scroll over and see if I can find it um, but something like this uh, is a good idea um, especially if you have concrete all the way around it if you do plan on putting flowers or anything around there this is a good way to be able to put some kind of path light uh, keep it out of the grass and really you just got to run the wire up through like the drainage hole and it's pretty much hidden you don't see it and you can mount a light there the nice thing is you leave a little extra here you can move that light it's not right by the pool um, so you don't have to worry about looking up into it while you're swimming but then it creates that kind of visual um, stimulating look uh, around the pool if you were to do that in a in a couple of those areas um, on barbecues like this again I, I don't want to put a whole ton especially if there's grass if you decide to put some flower beds and stuff around you could highlight this perimeter a little bit with some path and garden lights like you have um, another light I think you should um, probably consider is these um, uh, under cap lights um, they're great or on decks fences any hardscapes um, you know if you can sneak them under here but because this is already built you're probably not going to be able to but under the ledges of the decks um, under the stairs I like using those lights because you can hide them 
uh, quite easily underneath this metal plate comes off if you don't need it so you can just screw right into the step or use this bracket uh, to kind of slide it in there you don't see the actual light but it does a really nice job of lighting things down below uh, below it um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of an ideas back there and then kind of we're back into here again you know focusing on the entryway I mean if you've got this guy lit really nice um, something you may want to consider is like if there's some trees in the background that you want to stand out so this would be a good viewing angle option if this was my viewing angle I'm definitely highlighting this guy but I might want to throw some of those high intensity lamps on like a tree like this and then a couple on this tree in the background because now looking at the house it's all lit nicely but then you have these massive towering trees behind the house that are lit from above they're still going to look good from the backyard um, but they also give you that viewing angle from the front which is really cool um, a standard accent light on a tree like this really just to highlight the driveway but not having to throw a bunch of path lights I mean cars have headlights so you don't need to highlight down below really you're just trying to create a visually pleasing look as you come in because you have the flower beds here I mean this could be something that um, potentially I would throw a couple path lights in really just to highlight the contours of it and show off some of the flowers um, but Patrick it is a lot there um, let me know what you think of those ideas and stuff we can always kind of work on building a kit um, and go from there but I just wanted to give you a taste of some things to start working on with the, your tribe before you buy a kit and um, yeah and we can kind of go from there what I think I'll probably try and do too is I might throw an extra bulb in there one of the 50 watt equivalent ones just so that you can see um, you can see the difference between uh, the two intensities of light. So if you have any other questions, let me know. Thanks, Patrick. Hey guys, uh, I'm just gonna show you uh, an area, an example where we would use an in-ground light. So um, we have these nice uh, stone columns coming into the driveway area of this house. And uh, sorry, it's a little loud, it's a little windy uh, right by the roadway here, but bear with me. Um, but entryways of, of driveways, entryways of the homes, you always want to try and feature those, especially and typically you have typically you have some nice features like some stone pillars or something around the house, um, some nice columns or beams or something. You always want to try and get a light on that. So for this example, we're using our in-ground light. Uh, reason being is because this is kind of a rock driveway area. I don't want to use a typical up light and accent light, which um, will basically get you the same effect. The difference is I want the light source to start right right at the ground right right at the base and I don't want to have to worry about anybody from the street or any vehicles or anything knocking this over or hitting it or anything like that so we're gonna put this right in the ground um, I've got it not too far back from the pillar I've got it maybe we'll call it 12 to 18 inches back of the pillar it's gonna be shining straight up we're gonna get this pillar as well as a lot of the foliage and the trees that are above so uh, these in ground and accent lights we don't use them all the time uh, because they are a little bit more costly, um, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more maintenance to keep clean, especially if you're in a leafy area. But in some cases, it's a great light to use, and that's where we're going to use it uh, on this property. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape. And be sure if you want your own free consultation video, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.